This video is sponsored by Adobe. Marcus Radich from PageProof. Welcome to Creative Pro Conversations. I am so glad to see you again. It has it's been really good uh, to see you. Yeah. Yes, it's been a couple of months since Creative Pro Week uh, in Washington, D.C., where uh, you had some. You, you demoed some amazing software. PageProof, for those of you who don't know, PageProof is this incredible solution to an age-old problem of, of, of proofing among a team. I mean, those of, you know, if you have just one person and they're working in a closet all by themselves, not such a big problem to proof. You just go over the files. But as soon as you have a team that you need to move your designs from one person to the next, then you have a challenge. And of course, Adobe has some interesting solutions for that. Um, and uh, the, the most obvious one is you export a PDF and you email it to somebody and then they email it, then they mark it up and send it back to you and then you email it to somebody else. Um, it's very clunky. There's a very clunky, it's, you know, we've been doing it for 20 years, but it's still very clunky. PageProof came in and said, okay, let's, let's rework, re rethink this whole thing. Let's really consider proofing as though this were a team sport that we all have to work together to win. And I, I just love what you were doing. So you were demoing this at Creative Pro Week. Um, people were, heads were exploding in, in joy. Um, but so I wanted to pick up the conversation from there and, uh, and, and talk a little bit about some different aspects of page proof and the proofing process. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you. Thank you very much. For, for the intro. Um, it was really good to see you. And it was a fantastically organized week, I must say. We, uh, we enjoyed Thank it. You. It was just absolutely spot on. It was great. Yeah. It, you know, we talked about a number of things there, but a lot of what we talked about was more from an InDesign perspective. Uh, but PageProof works with a lot of different technologies, web and email. You can proof emails, you can proof websites, you can proof Figma, you can proof all kinds of stuff. But um, Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator is one area where I think a lot of uh, people in the Creative Pro community are going to be interested. Uh, let's say packaging. If you're doing packaging, I mean, you could do all kinds of Illustrator stuff. But packaging is a particular challenge because uh, designers have to go through a lot of steps to make sure that a package gets approved. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely true. And I think packaging design is, and actually can break it down to probably three areas. So packaging design, logo design, and label design, they all sort of carry very similar sort of feels because once you use it or put it out there, it's, it's, it's out of your control. So for example, yeah. if you design some packaging and you send it off and it gets approved by various means and someone presses the button to print a million of those things, <laughs> it's gone. It's, that's right. it. There's no go, going back. Similarly with labels and with logos, you do some logo design, you spend a lot of time getting it right. Once it leaves your hands and goes out there into partners and other people who now use that logo uh, in space, who knows whether it makes sure it's right, has to be right. So right. it is an area, I think, where we need to take the, the time and the care to make sure that those files are correct and mm -hmm. that the reviewers have been able to have the opportunity to check it thoroughly and also leave their feedback. So it's, it's quite an interesting area. And the reviewers is, are not necessarily just your art director or the various designers on a project. It might be the legal team, certainly the marketing team. It could be management. It would be a lot, of different, a lot of different stakeholders that need to look at this, and not necessarily all at the same time. And I, I, I think I just want to point out one of the most interesting things about what, what you've done with PageProof is you've created these, these workflows. You understand the concept of, okay, these people need to, to proof it first, and we need to get sign off, and then we need to go to this next team, and then we need to go to legal and so on. And I think that's it's really great. Mm. So the workflows are, and they've been there for the last you know, eight, eight years that we've been doing this, the workflows were one of our first uh, features where you can say, hey, ship this off to creative first so they can check it. And now it needs to go to the content team to make sure that, you know, all the wording is correct, the ingredients list is correct, you know, all those kinds of aspects, the correct photography. Then it does go, need to go to legal, et cetera, et cetera. So those workflows and staging the work, um, the, the, tra the trajectory of that, of that proof is pretty important. 
And another thing that we've added just recently is also now checklists. So page proof, when you open a proof, it'll pop up a checklist and people actually need to say, yes, I've checked the logo. Yes, I've checked the copy. Yes, I've done this before it can be approved. So we've got some great uh, additions that aid in that compliance and just making sure that the responsibilities in those different areas are, are taken care of. So um, some really, really great tech to help people get that feedback and get it accurately as well. So I, as a designer, am putting together this list of uh, this checklist. I can say I want this person to look at these four things and make sure they look at them. They check them off. They, have, they, they must be checked off before yeah. the approve button highlights. So there's some Love nice that. little things that you can do, which are, uh, and it comes from those pre-press days that I used to work in where on my light table, I had the film in front of me and I used to <laughs> look at my yeah. checklist on the light table and make sure, yes, I've checked that. Yes, I've checked that before we release the film to go to the printer. So the idea came from there, which is mm -hmm. we had a checklist back in the day. We still need a checklist today. Yeah. Checklists help make sure things are right. Well, and, you know, we do have checklists. It's, uh, it's in that email that was sent to me a couple weeks ago. Uh, just give me a half hour and I'll find it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so the exactly idea of putting, right. putting that right there in front of me in the proofing process, I think is proofing approval is, is great. Now let, let's go back to Illustrator. Um, mm. Actually, do you want to show, I was thinking it might be mm. fun for you just to show what you're doing with Illustrator, how that, how that looks, what, what it looks like inside your system. Absolutely. Let me, let me uh, just show you exactly some of the areas that we're covering off and we'll open up Illustrator here. So, here we have Illustrator and I have a piece of, this is actually a, a, a top of a, of a box. And this is fairly typical for some of those pieces of work that I'll be talking about earlier where you know, you've got the design, you've got things like QR codes, barcodes, there might be information. There's a die line here. When we've got information down here on the bottom of this sort of packaging mm -hmm. file. So you can take this file and you can drag and drop it across into page proof. So if I just take the file from my computer drag it into page proof, into the proof setup screen, I can choose a workflow. So I'm going to say, send it out to these people. So it shows me the teams that it's going to move through for the approval side of it. And then mm -hmm. down the bottom here, you can see I can choose a checklist. Mm -hmm. So I can say, I'd like to use the packaging checklist. So I just choose the packaging checklist. I can say whether it's required for approval and whether it opens on proof load. And then I can just send that proof out. So that'll just upload the proof into page proof and it will send notifications out to people so they can then jump in and take a closer look at that piece of work. So if we do that right now, and just pop in here and open up that proof, what we get here is the checklist popping up first of all, just saying, hey, here's the packaging checklist. So you need to go through and check the copy, the colors and fonts and logos and trims and all those sorts of things. So this is giving me a bit of a heads up on the sorts of things I should check with this kind of file. So uh, that's pretty handy, but I'll just park that aside for the moment. Now with packaging files inside of PageProof, you'll notice on the left-hand side, we've got a, um, the ability here to go through and leave feedback. So, you know, I can zoom in a bit closer on here. I don't need Illustrator on my, com on my computer. I can get in and take a close look at, at this packaging file. And that's great. I can see that's a couple great. of things I probably want to leave feedback on. But some of the major things that we can do here is things like, hey, I would like to measure an element on this page. So there's a ruler tool here, especially for packaging design. So I can grab the mm -hmm. ruler tool. And then with the ruler tool, you can measure elements on the page. So I can say, well, how big is this over here? And we can see it's showing in millimeters at the moment. I can change that, by the way. And in <laughs> fact, I will uh, to, to make sure that all the audiences are covered. There we go. So those that work in millimeters, <laughs> that's covered. And we can also measure in inches as well. So again, grab the ruler tool and you can measure those different elements simply by clicking and dragging and it will give you the sizes of those things. So that's quite important for, for barcodes and QR codes yeah. and those sorts of things. And that's There's based also, on the illustrator, the size of the illustrator? Because, illustrator I mean, the, yeah. It's yeah. a vector file. It could be huge or tiny or. Yeah, exactly. So but that's showing us okay. now from a, from a packaging point of view, that's that should be to scale from a taking the resolution out of that because it's vector, as you say. So that's um, that's taken into account, which is really, really great. OK, great. There's also grid lines here. So if you want people to check alignment, we allow you to bring in these grid lines. So you can just click and drag in these oh grid lines 
just like you do. It's very familiar, this. Um, oh, yeah. You can, yeah, you can say, well, hang on, is that lining up the way we'd expect? So you can pull in multiple grid lines here and just check that the elements that you expected are lining up in the way that you would expect. So grid lines are an aspect which is quite important. And then finally inside of here, there is a color separation preview. So down the bottom here, color set is an option you can tap. And color set takes you into a color separation preview mode. Wow. So you can see here, here is my composite. And again, for the print nerds, and I am one of those, uh, I can say, well, show me the cyan plate. So I can see the cyan elements of here. And if I go into magenta, right, I can see the, the magenta and cool. The black is overprinting as I, uh, as I expect. Um, so I can go in here and check all the color plates and make sure that everything is as, as it should be. And when I click on the dye line, it's showing me the dye line plate as well. So I can see five color print job. And uh, this is how everything looks. The cool and thing is with the, this, the dye line, yeah. the dye line there is is a, is a spot color or is a... It's a spot color, yeah. So okay, that so spot color the... will that is a separate plate, yeah. Uh, this yeah. is extraordinary that you're. I mean, yes, we can do that with Adobe tools. That's great. But the fact that you're taking it out of that ecosystem and into a brow a web browser yeah. that, yeah. as you said, anybody can. You don't have to have Illustrator. You don't have to have these other tools. You can say, hey. Just go check this out for me and do it yeah. in a web browser is extraordinary. Yeah. And you can do one last thing I'll show you is when that okay. feedback and stuff, I grab this pen tool and I say, actually, over here, I'd like that to be uh, lighter. Uh, when I add these comments onto the um, proof inside of page proof, mm -hmm. when we switch over to Adobe Illustrator, what happens is when you're inside of Illustrator, you will see that uh, when you bring up that proof inside of the page proof panel. A lot of people would have seen this panel from uh, other things inside of InDesign, but it also works inside of Illustrator. You can highlight the uh, proof name inside of here, highlight the comment, and you'll see it's bringing in the markup on top of the Illustrator file. So wow. you can see exactly where that refers to. So just showing you those comments flowing back into your Adobe tools as well. So that's what I thought I'd just show you as part of the demonstration of what you can do with page proof and illustrator. It's very powerful. No, that's great. It's, yeah. it's really powerful. Again, whether you're doing packaging or labels, uh, anything with it, with illustrator, it yeah. makes sense that you could run it through this process. I, I would think that even uh, if you're even editorial design, if you're doing illustration, you could send that out for, uh, for review with, with a magazine, with a newspaper, whoever you're sending that to uh, that it's very powerful uh, ha yeah, having absolutely. that communication and again taking it out of the the email thread where it's just having yeah. to have that response and you know call and response over and over again um, and putting it into this system just feels like it is so much cleaner and more efficient yeah and we get that from a lot of companies and I think the the big thing that we're seeing with a lot of companies these days is compliance uh, it's gone out and somebody comes along and says hey, can you show me the due diligence that you went through to actually get this approved? Uh, you know, oh, wow. we'd, we'd like to just see the trail on this. And that could be an auditor. Or if you're working for a large organization, particularly if you're doing a lot of fast-moving consumer goods or work for a sure. company that does some, some packaging that goes you know, nationwide into, into um, stores, there's a chance that one day someone's going to say, hey, can you show me how you approved all this? It's just one click and you can get an audit report for it. So wow. no more trawling through the email trying to find right, right. the back and forward to show that you actually uh, got it formally approved in a, in a correct manner. So and, and, there is that component too. And even if it's not like a formal compliance, formal compliance system, even if it's just there, something went terribly wrong, who can we blame? <laughs> you know, you can yeah. just the ability yeah. in a larger team to be able to go through and say, okay, who did not follow the checkbook, the checkboxes? Yeah. Who or yeah. who did who approved this last? That's important. That's great. Yeah, and, wow. it, and, it, and it can happen. Someone can come along and say, "I'm pretty sure that we should have made that piece there purple," and you can say, um, "I don't think we we were going to do that." And then you can go back through the uh, through the versions and say, right. ah, "Actually, nobody asked for it to be purple." So, you know, there's right. some some great advantages in that. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for showing that. This is, again, I just feel like 
you've been in the trenches yourself. You know what this is like in the, in the design world. And yeah. the fact that you've taken all of that expertise and built it into a system like this, uh, it shows. It really shows that the professionalism and the, the thought that's been that's gone into it. Um, I, I'm not just saying that. I really, it's really amazing. Every time I see it, it's like, I mean, even the design, you know, the, the fact mm. that a designer, um, the, the web pages themselves are designed uh, makes me feel happy. Like when I'm in there, I'm like, oh, it's just, it's so clean and it's easy and I, I know where to look. And that's very different than a lot of other systems out there, right? That are just, that are put yeah. together by engineers where it's like, oh yeah, the, you know, what's wrong with showing 900 things at the same time? You've Ooh. really distilled it down to an easy to use uh, system. I, I, so I, I, I applaud you for that. Thank you. Yeah, I think that was very important because the first thing that you want when you send out something for feedback is you want people to give you feedback. So it's got to be simple to use. Yeah. It's got to be an, and encourage them to actually put their feedback in. So that was important as part of the design. I love that. Well, thank you for taking the taking a few moments to show us how Illustrator works inside PageProof. Um, we're going to be back with some more conversations in the future, but Marcus Radish, thank you so much for being here uh, as part of this. Uh, it's so important to me and to Creative Pro to share these, these solutions uh, with the community because a lot of people are like, I had no idea that this was out there. Everyone who's here listening uh, and watching today, I hope you learned something new. Hope you get a chance to, to dive in and try PageProof yourself. And uh, I, I think you're going to like it. Thank you very much, David.